assalam alaikum today we are going to see the model of the brain uh, so we will look at the uh, brain from three aspects one is from the lateral aspect one is from the inferior aspect and one is from the medial aspect so first of all we will see the brain from the medial aspect that is a sagittal section of the brain so this is the view of the sagittal section of the brain now uh, we will uh, discuss the sulci gyri and the features uh, that we see on the medial surface and later on we will discuss the blood supply first of all you can see that uh, this is the frontal lobe this is the frontal lobe up to here this is the parietal lobe and this is the occipital lobe in the medial aspect we can see there are three lobes here so now what are the gyri and sulci we can appreciate here first of all you can see this blue colored structure this blue colored structure is corpus callosum this is the corpus callosum above the corpus callosum we have this gyrus this is known as a uh, uh, cingulate gyrus between cingulate gyrus and uh, corpus callosum we have this sulcus this is known as uh, the uh, callosal sulcus this is known as the callosal sulcus above the uh, cingulate gyrus we have another sulcus this known is uh, this one is known as uh, cingulate sulcus and above the cingulate sulcus this is the medial surface of the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe uh, here you can appreciate this area this area this u shaped area this is known as paracentral lobule this u shaped area is the paracentral lobule so corpus callosum then we have the callosal sulcus above it we have the cingulate gy gyrus above it we have the cingulate sulcus and more superiorly we have this paracentral lobule this area uh, here this is the medial surface of the frontal lobe and here we know that the uh, supplementary motor area is present now uh, here posteriorly we have a, uh, a sulcus here this is known as parieto occipital sulcus this is the parieto occipital sulcus and uh, if we move uh, post, uh, posteriorly we will uh, again have a sulcus this is known as calcarine sulcus this is calcarine sulcus this is parieto occipital sulcus the the part of the uh, brain which is present anterior to the uh, parieto occipital sulcus is known as the cuneus uh, precuneus and the part which is present behind is known as cuneus so this is the uh, these are the sulci and gyri which we can see on the medial surface uh, we will see the diencephalon and the lateral ventricle i have uh, told you earlier this blue colored structure is the corpus callosum corpus callosum has the following parts first of all this is the rostrum this is the rostrum of the corpus callosum then we have this curved part this is known as genu behind the genu we have the body and the terminal dilated part is known as plenum so this is uh, the corpus callosum now uh, below the corpus callosum you can see a cavity here this is known as the cavity of the lateral ventricle this is the cavity of lateral ventricle now we know that in the floor of the cavity of the lateral ventricle in the part of the body uh, we have a nucleus that is known as the caudate nucleus this pink color is the caudate nucleus this is forming the floor of the lateral ventricle and uh, medial to the caudate nucleus we have this structure this is known as fornix so caudate nucleus and then we have fornix now uh, coming towards the diencephalon in the diencephalon we know that uh, th that is forming the lateral wall of the third ventricle so in the diencephalon in the sagittal view uh, we can appreciate the thalamus and the hypothalamus this structure this uh, on which there is a point is also marked this black color point this is the thalamus and below the thalamus this structure is known as hypothalamus thalamus and hypothalamus in the thalamus these two are separated by the hypothalamic sulcus which is drawn by this line so in the thalamus you know uh, there is a bulge here that is uh, this bulge is actually of the interthalamic adhesion this white color bulge this is of the interthalamic adhesion you know that two thalami are connected by the interthalamic adhesions so this is representing it here uh, if we move 
uh, antero inferiorly towards the hypothalamus, uh, you can notice that uh, this white color, uh, blue color sheet here, this one, it is representing the lamina terminalis. Above it is continuous with the rostrum of the corpus callosum and uh, here it is forming the uh, lamina terminalis. And uh, below the lamina terminalis you can see this is pituitary gland, this is pituitary. Now uh, you can see that some uh, structures can also be appreciated uh, in the diencephalon other than these. So, this is fornix and this is thalamus, between these two you know that there is a choroidal fissure. In the choroidal fissure, uh, there is there is actually the formation of the choroid plexus, this one. This choroid plexus is contributed by the uh, choroidal uh, branches of the uh, in, uh, internal carotid artery and it is also contributed by the uh, this vein, blue color vein that is coming from uh, here. It is actually coming from, uh, from this uh, choroidal fissure and it is going backwards. So, this vein is known as the great cerebral vein of Galen. This is great cerebral vein of Galen and it will go uh, into the straight sinus. So, this vein is also contributing in the formation of this choroid plexus. Now, this pink color structure here, this is known as the pineal gland. This is the pineal gland and this uh, pink color structure, this line this is uh, representing the stria medullaris thalami. This is pineal gland and this is stria medullaris thalami. And uh, uh, we can also see the anterior and posterior commissure here. This bundle, this one anteriorly, this is representing the anterior commissure and this bundle posteriorly, this is representing the posterior commissure. So, these are two commissural fibers that are uh, also present in the diencephalon anteriorly and posteriorly. So, now we will move towards the midbrain and uh, the brainstem. Now this whole structure below, this is the brainstem. It is formed from above downward by midbrain, pons and medulla. So in the midbrain, you can notice that uh, there is a slit like space behind the midbrain. This is representing the cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius, this one. And uh, you know, uh, you can notice that uh, the point 4 is uh, actually uh, pointing towards the cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius. This is the cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius and behind this you can notice the two colliculi, the superior colliculus and inferior colliculus. Together these four, uh, together these four are called as corpora quadrigemina. So here we can only see the two, superior and inferior colliculi. This is pons, uh, this dilated part is the pons and below you, this is medulla oblongata. Behind the uh, lower part of the pons and upper part of the medulla, you can notice this rhomboid shaped cavity. This is known as the fourth ventricle. And uh, these two white uh, fibers, these two, this is the inferior medullary vellum and this is the superior medullary vellum. These are actually forming the roof of the uh, uh, fourth ventricle and this is the cavity of the fourth ventricle. Now the cerebellum, uh, you know that cerebellum in the sagittal section uh, appears uh, like uh, you know uh, the, le uh, the leaf like structure, it appears like a leaf. So in the cerebellum you can see there are multiple pink colored folias and these folias are actually separated by the uh, fissures, these folias are separated by the fissures. So, uh, these, uh, this white color uh, line, uh, this is actually representing the white matter of the cerebellum that's, uh, that is uh, here, uh, it is in the shape of the uh, branches of a leaf. So, it is known as arbor whitey. These white color fibers are called arbor whitey and they are representing the white matter of the cerebellum.